Hey everyone, welcome in, welcome back. Back with another exciting video about the WAN depth control LoRa that just came out recently. It's still in beta, so it's only gonna get better and you should continuously check back for new versions because the person working on this is doing some awesome work and continually updating their hugging face repo with the latest and greatest. So let's dive right in. Um, you can check the link in my Patreon below, 100% free Patreon, no cost to you. I do this to get the word out about new technology so that we can all learn and we can all push the AI space to move faster. In the end, we all benefit. So completely free, it'll always be 100% free. So head over there and First thing you want to do is open the link to the LoRa. It'll bring you to this page and you're going to want to download the depth control LoRa. So this one, click the download button here and you can also grab the workflow from here. If you want, I made a couple modifications and up upgrades to the workflow to make it run faster and a little bit better quality. So that's why I'd recommend using mine, but feel free to just grab this uh, original one as well. So once you've downloaded it, we need to put it into Comfy UI so that it can be used. So here's my Comfy UI folder, and then we're gonna put it into our models, Laura's folder. So I have it inside of my Awan subfolder. Uh, you can see it right here, but you can easily put it in your Laura's folder as well, and it'll work out fine. Okay, so the only other thing that you should do if you haven't done it already, whenever you're playing with something that's like the latest and greatest, you should always update your comfy UI. Um, you can try to do it via the man manager, but with some of the version updating that comfy UI has done, the update comfy UI doesn't always get you the latest and greatest. So typically the best way to get the latest and greatest is by going to your Comfy UI folder in the root. So this is my Comfy UI root folder and then just doing a git pull. So that, that should grab you all the newest files that you need to, to run this. The only other thing that you might wanna do for some of the optimizations or speed improvements is I have used KJ nodes. So if you go to your custom nodes manager and search for KJ nodes, obviously once you put in the workflow, you're going to have installed it, but you want to update it as well. And then once you update, you'll have to restart and refresh your browser. I've already done that, so um, I'm not going to do it again, but those two things might be two gotchas in this tutorial that you might want to fix. Okay. So now let's grab our workflows. I'm going to go through native first. I would recommend you to using native for this um, because you can split up the samplers. It makes it a little bit easier to follow what's going going on and gives you a little bit more control over how we're denoising the, the video. So let's go through the native first. I'll go through the wrapper after. All right. So downloaded it, drag that file into Comfy UI. The other thing that native does for you is it gives you a better ability to be able to use LoRa's because Juan doesn't really like stacking LoRa's. You'll get some quality hits if you stack LoRa's, but because we're gonna run this through two samplers, you can put the depth LoRa on the first sampler and then you can put your actual, actual style or likeness LoRa on the second sampler. Okay, so these are for the Juan 2.13b model. If you don't know how to install Juan and you want to learn, there's a link in my description. I have a video I've done before on installing Juan. You're going to want to watch that if you don't know how to run Juan already. There's also some workflows on my Patreon that go along with that video, similar to this video to help you get started quickly. Okay, so then there's this activate for speedups group. So if you already have Tcash, Triton, and Sage Attention working in your environment, then you can right click on this and hit set group nodes to always and then this will activate tcache torch compile and sage attention for you you should also activate this as well you can combine these groups into one big one but just for the sake of uh, honestly 
aesthetics, I didn't move these over into this group. But if you wanted to, you could just put them all in one group and that way you can turn it on and off um, depending on if you have Tcash or Triton installed. So these do provide a significant increase in speed, a significant improvement that it makes it worth going through the headache of learning Tcash, Triton, Sage Attention installs. So I would recommend doing that. You can also play with the Tcash threshold here. Um, typically like between zero and 0.3 is gonna be your best option. I'm gonna leave it at 0.15 for, for this testing. Um, and then the only other thing here, if you wanna use a, a LoRa other than just the, the depth control LoRa, you're gonna to want to bypass this node. And this node is gonna be your style slash character LoRa. And then this node is your depth LoRa. Okay, so you can see my depth LoRa right there. I, I selected it in my LoRa loader. And then these are required for torch compile. So if you're not using torch compile, you can bypass both of these. But if you are using torch compile, leave them on. It, it patches the model so that torch compile works correctly. Okay, and then the only other things that be, because we're using a sampler custom instead of a regular K sampler, it kind of splits out all the settings. So if you want to increase your steps, go to like, you, you can just change it here. So if I want to do 40 steps or 10 steps, um, I can change that here. So split sigmas essentially says how many steps are going to be done in the first sampler versus the second sampler. So the high sigmas are going to be done in the first 10 steps, the low sigmas. So that's 10 steps on high sigmas with the sampler custom and then the remaining steps. So 15 steps are going to be the low sigmas, which are going to be used in the second sampler. Okay. And then, so this is, so the first sampler adds noise, which helps create that randomization that creates an AI image. The second sampler doesn't add any more noise. It just cleans up the noise that's still there with the new model. So that's either with the Wand standalone model, or if you add in a LoRa, that's the one, it uses the Wand standalone model plus LoRa. Okay, and that's really all you need to know for the technical details here. We're outputting it at 16 FPS. So let's go get into the inputs now. So I'm using load video path. You can easily replace this with load video upload. It'll do the same, same thing for you. I just don't like that load video upload creates a copy of the video when I already have it on my computer system. There's no, there's no need to create that copy. Okay, and then we pass it through a depth anything. So this is gonna create our depth map. And if you wanna resize that depth map, say you have, you know, like a, a 1080p video and you want it to be 480p, you can just adjust these height and width the LoRa works best around like 600, like 624 by 624 or 480 by 832, something in that range. If you get too large or too small, it's not going to work as well. Okay. And then, so that's what this upscale image node does. If you want to use that, then turn off the bypass. My video is already 832 by 480, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, and then we're just passing the depth map into the pix to pix conditioning, and then it's gonna use the depth map to generate our depth. Okay, so I'm gonna run one without Laura first, and then I'll run one with Laura to show you that it it's actually doing something with the LoRa and then we'll be good to go. And I, I'll run this in real time just so you can see how fast this is. I am running on a 5090, but even if you have, I believe, I'm using 100 frames and this is using 17 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you knocked it down to 81 frames, you could easily fit this within 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you're wondering if going through all of that Tcash, Torch Compile, Sage Attention stuff is worth it, watch how fast this generation is and maybe it'll convince you one way or the other.
so you can see how quick that was quality not amazing on this one we are using the 1.3 b model so we expect some quality hit but obviously i mean a completely different generation but following the same depth that we had before and my input video isn't amazing quality to begin with this is an, a, a one generation from the beginning so with a better quality input in video you'll probably get a better quality output one other thing to play around with is um when you are using these speed ups i would recommend keeping both model patchers on um i didn't do that with this run but it probably will help because it'll make it make removing the depth Laura um, more concrete. Okay, now I wanna show you with Alora. So all I'm gonna do, I haven't changed the workflow at all. I'm just gonna activate this flat color Laura, and we're gonna see the difference between our previous generation and our new generation. All right, so there you can see our old generation and our new generation only changing, only adding the Laura in. You can see now we have this flat color instead of a more realistic start style video. So pretty cool stuff there. Like I said, I recommend the native workflow. The only reason I would recommend using the wrapper is if you're really low on VRAM and you need like every single little, little quantization and optimization to fit it, you know, like less than six or four gigabytes or something like that. That's when I would recommend the wrapper over native. Okay, so with that said, let's head over to the wrapper and try that one out. Download the wrapper workflow and drag it in. Okay, so I have this video of a guy holding a sword here and I'm gonna change the prompt to, let's just say uh, medieval knight holding a long sword. So how this works, Torch compiles up here. If you don't have Torch compile working, you can just bypass it. It's gonna take longer, but that's fine. Sage attention, if you don't have Sage attention working, you can use SDPA, or if you have flash attention working, you can use those. FP16 fast, I'm not 100% sure if it works on all cards or just on 50 series cards. So if this gives you issues, just go to BF16, it works fine. Um, if you're, like I said, if you need like every single possible base saver or quantization, you can use FP8 here. I'm just gonna run it on BF16 because um, the 1.3 model is already pretty small. Okay, the, your text encoders here. So if you don't have your text encoders already and you don't have the wrapper working already, head over to that one 2.1 installation guide that's linked in the description. It'll walk you through that. Quantization, you can enable FP8 if you want. I'm gonna run it at BF16. And then your VAE, um, I'm gonna run it. There, There is an FP32 model, but I'm just gonna use the BF16 model. Okay, and then, so this here says when the control LoRa turns on and off. So similar to our sampler custom and native, this is the way that we handle it, it with the wrapper. So you typically wanna start at zero and then you can go between maybe between like 0.2 and 0.6 i would recommend if you go to 0.2 it's gonna care less about the depth map it'll still use the depth map but it'll care less about it if you go all the way up to like 0.8 it's gonna make sure that it's very adherent to the depth map okay and then the last thing is if you need to resize the image you can resize it with this node um like I mentioned before, I think the Laura works best between like 832 by 480 and 624 by 624 or something something along those lines. Okay, and then I have Tcash and SLG uh, skip layer guidance working down here. With this one, Tcash is no extra install, so that's that's helpful. And I believe that's all the settings you need to worry about for this. So upload your video, give it a prompt, and I'm gonna turn Torch Compile back on and we'll give this generation a go. Okay, so actually this is what happens when you don't give the model enough creativity, right? So we got very good adherence to the, to the depth map, but we didn't get a lot of that creativity which can 
help adjust those buildings and stuff. So I, I accidentally left the end percent at one. I'm gonna turn this down to like 0.4. All right, so you can see I added a little bit more creativity. I mean, if we wanted exactly what we had in the in the imp source video, then maybe we would want that much higher, um, much higher adherence to the control net. But we get better quality of the armor, and you know, it's maybe slightly better quality of the face by giving the model a little bit more uh, leeway, and we definitely get more background you know more texture in the background as well that is it for this video if you have any trouble getting it to work as always you can either leave a comment down below or you can join the discord i'm happy to help with technical issues in the discord um, it's easier there because we can share photos and things like that back and forth follow my other socials any any place where you can give me a follow it really helps me out it helps me put out more content and i appreciate um, everyone who has subscribed so far the the community has been awesome and welcoming me in and and just helping me generate more content for all of you i have some exciting new stuff coming out i'm working on a my own custom laura that i think is going to be really helpful i've been it's been a really big learning process but i'm excited to to finally put it out um so look out for that coming in a, in a couple of weeks and that is it for today i hope to talk to you again in the next video